Hi again, everyone. I'm Ollie Matthews. This is Refuge from Narcissism, and this refugee video is sponsored by contribution from Anonymous, and here's her story. Hi, Ollie. Thank you for the video. Your narcissistic mother disowned you at birth, and thank you to your viewers for their kind and supportive comments. I'm sorry for the list of disjointed thoughts as a result of my poor editing. Your viewers were right about my stress levels being off the charts. My mother had just tried to drop in a few days before and our pet was sick around that time. I thought I might clear a few things up and follow up on my previous letter. My biological father abandoned me. He was never part of my life. I only know he is my father due to him denying it in child support court and having to submit to a DNA test. In the letter, I mentioned that I started to pack up to move in with our dad when, he, when we were kids. That was actually my brother's father. I do think of that man as my dad, and my dad since he was the one who was there in my formative years. I said that it hurt her feelings, but I was downplaying the screaming and anger my actions caused her. That was the moment she instilled Stockholm Syndrome in us. I realized we couldn't escape. I was taught to put my parents' needs before my own. Even when I had been molested and reported it to the police, I wanted to stay with my stepfather that weekend because I didn't want him to feel hurt by me going home. I was told he beat the crap out of the offender before the police got to him, but I don't remember. My therapist told me that I had disassociated and entered a dreamlike state to protect myself. The fact that I was more concerned with my parents' feelings than given, than given a chance to recover has made me very angry lately. Hell, they wanted, a, they wanted a party. It was their fault I was assaulted. I didn't dwell on the drama my whole life. As a matter of fact, I tried to put it behind me and pretend it didn't happen. I've been dealing with it more since no contact. I get so angry and it feels incredibly painful. You were right though. She disowned me at birth. She used to tell me so many times how lonely she was after she had me. I thought it was a cautionary tale about choosing the father of your children more wisely. Now I just can't imagine having a beautiful baby girl and feeling lonely. How could you hold your child, look, there, look into their face and eyes and feel lonely? That's another human being right there because she's looking at everything she has to give, the love and affection, okay? And the responsibility she has to give in order to raise you and she didn't want to do it. And she's realizing as she's looking, well, if I got to give all this, what is everybody else going to give? And that means there's less of all that for me. Boo-hoo, boo-hoo. There is a story my aunt told me that I was too shocked to believe at first. She told me that she came to visit and walked in on my mother, throwing me in the crib so hard that I hit the, I hit the back before falling in. She said she scooped me up and took me out of the house. That's great and all, but how did I end up back in my mother's house? Why didn't my aunt call the police on my mother? Because they didn't want to get that involved. Because they saw it, and they're like, eh, do I really want to get this involved? Because then who's going to... And then they throw you right back into the lion's den. Once, back when we were spending time together, I mentioned how innocent children, how innocent children and babies were. I said something about how they needed a parent's love. My mother told me that children are manipulative, even as babies. This is the psychosis. Like, this is the psych. This is how they get themselves to make it okay to hate you. These are the lies the fucking borderline mother tells themselves in order to hate, hate their own children. They make themselves believe it. They believe it because they want to believe it. 
I stayed quiet and let her dig that grave. She told me that babies are manipulative because they see you laugh and smile. You walk away, they start to cry. Then you come back, they start to laugh and smile again. What a sociopath. I was surprised that she could believe such a thing and made a mental note of her opinion. They say they, they believe they make themselves believe these things so they can hate you. It doesn't take an expert in child development to figure out figure that one out. It's a helpless baby for Christ's sake. Your presence is a matter of survival to them. And because they you want to love your mother as a baby. You don't know any better. Those three points makes me wonder if she mirrored my expressions as a baby. I have a hard time remembering what people's faces look like, and I don't enjoy the eye contact. Here's the other thing why she thinks, why, why the borderline thinks a baby is manipulative. Because in what she described, the crying when you leave, the happy when you're set, those are the borderline women's fucking same exact tactics. They're babies. It's unreal. They exhibit the same behavioral characteristics as an infant child, as a baby. They look at it and say, oh, well, they must be manipulative. Instead of having to admit to themselves, you know what? I'm just a large fucking baby myself. These are the lies they tell themselves to make it okay to hate you. Those three points makes me wonder if she mirrored my expressions as a baby. I have a hard time remembering what people's faces look like and I don't enjoy eye contact. It was difficult to hear that I was living in a fantasy about harboring a relationship with my brother. My husband pointed out that my brother was using our mother to watch his older children instead of seeing them himself. I thought back to when I referred to his children as a blessing. His response was that he could, couldn't could see how and see see how and that they caused him too much stress. You see, my brother is younger than me and I and used to feel protective of him. Our mom couldn't turn us against each other, much to her dismay. She even told me so as an adult, that it got on her nerves that we wouldn't rat on each other to her. I feel that bond has been broken in adulthood, especially once I initiated no contact with our mother. It wasn't until a few days after you did the video that I realized you were right. Why would I defend myself from calling him from why would I defend myself from me calling from him calling me those awful names? I thought about how I never called any of them names or lied about them or talked behind their backs and that was enough for me. My mo my mother always told me that I had a guilty conscience and I was defensive and when they tell you that that is projection. That it's the same shit my mother would tell me. I'm like, and I would tell her right, like, you're the one with the guilty conscience. Everything, and I used to, I knew it then. Everything you accuse me of is because that's how you think. I knew it then. Because my mother was easy to see through. I think my mother's BS accusations my whole childhood led to an urge to defend myself. I realize now that it was completely unnecessary. Thank you. My list of res resurfacing memories grows and the freaking nightmares are plentiful. Some nightmares are about being chased, stalked, being held prisoner, home invasions or assaults, some sexual assaults. I'm left wondering if there's more that my brain won't let me remember. Other nightmares are creepy. I had one where I thought we were with a group of happy people, but I kept getting a feeling that once we pulled a blanket over our head, then the leader would bash our heads in. Because that's how you feel about your mother. Because that's exactly how you feel about your mother. Once nobody's looking, you're in big trouble. 
just like your mother got caught throwing you against your crib wall. Because you know what they're really about. Because they've been telling themselves lies, okay, in order to make it okay in their head to hate you. That's what the borderline mother does. I could have run away, but was just sitting there pondering over how to get out and hoping that I was wrong. After waking up, the best way I could describe it was a dream about being in a cult. I've been watching her older videos. It was surreal to realize how similar, how similar our stories are and how many have gone through similar things. It's rampant, but... We are the ones who have the power to break the cycle. I hope your migraine is let up and you'll be feeling better soon. I have them as well and understand how debilitating they can be. Thank you for this outlet and to your viewers who have been wonder a wonderful form of validation for me. I went from fearful of another surprise visit by my mother to not caring if she knocked at all. I just ignore it. I'll leave you and your audience with a quote from the movie 1984 that resonated with me. Obedience is not enough. Unless he is suffering, how can you be sure that he is obeying your will and not his own? Power is inflicting pain and humiliation. Power is tearing human minds to pieces and putting them together again in new shapes of your own choosing. George Orwell. The borderline mother, the Marxist, the communist, where and whatever, and who Orwell was talking about. Okay, these all these people tell themselves lies in order to make it okay to abuse you. That's what your mother did. That's what she spent a lifetime of doing. She projects her own behavior, sees her own behavior in a baby. It's like, oh, well, that baby's being manipulative because your mother does the same tactics to get what she wants. So, I hope that helps. Thank you so much, Anonymous, for another contribution and story. I really appreciate it. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, something you'd like me to expose, you'd like to set up a Skype phone call, have a private video made, you'd like to sponsor a video like this for someone who needs help and can't afford it, or just make a contribution to the channel in general to keep it supported, growing, and successful, because this channel survives 100% on contributions from all of you. Without you guys, all of this goes away. So if you like what you see here and you want to see more videos like this, you know what to do with the PayPal and email links in the description box. Also, please like and share this video wherever you can. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. I'm Ollie Matthews. This has been Refuge from Narcissism. Take care.